Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome back to another episode of Marketo Fu. Uh, my name is Joe Wrights, still. And uh, on today's episode, what I want to talk about is Marketo Forms 2.0. So uh, there's a number of reasons you might use a Marketo Form. Uh, the simplest, obviously, data capture. But then the simplest being uh, it's something a marketer can create without having to know HTML or uh, Java or any other programming language. You don't need to involve a web developer or IT. Uh, super easy to build, super convenient, can be embedded on either your website or a uh, Marketo landing page. Uh, takes CSS really well, so you can make them really pretty. No one's going to know that it's just a plug to your site or your landing pages. They, they're they're uh, phenomenal just across the board. So uh, what I want to do is actually just step through building one and show show a couple of the cooler features of Marketo Forms. So I'm going to share my screen here. That gets me every single time. All right. Um, so I like to build forms in the design studio. So I'm, I'm back over in the Fathom sandbox. And the reason I say the design studio is simply because um, if you put a form here, you can reference it in any number of programs. And if you ever need to make an edit to it, say uh, over a couple of the things we're going to talk about, like progressive fo profiling or visibility rules, um, it uh, it makes it really easy and scalable. Just edit it once, re batch reapprove all the landing pages it's used on, and you're done. Um, whereas if it's at the program level, uh, while while it will automatically write acquisition program to the program it's in, it's still not um, an ideal scenario from a, uh, a scalability standpoint. So if you can imagine putting this form in every single program, I'd have to make hundreds of little edits over the course of you know a year or two within, within my marketing automation platform. So uh, just as a general best practice, I like to keep all my forms in Design Studio. So go to, uh, when, when you, as, we're, as we're building this one, um, I'm just going to go on and edit the form. It's one that I was already working on. Um, and basically, when you load a new a new form in Marketo, it's going to um, have these three fields automatically there. And then you can add additional fields just by clicking this plus sign in the top right. And then say, um, you can either use a drop down or just start typing in the search box. Um, I don't know. We could say number of employees. That works. Um, so a couple things, and, and you can just build this out, and then you can go through all the various steps. And you can even, uh, if you go to step two and click this gear icon, you can even uh, edit the CSS and drop in your own CSS for the form. So that's that's kind of cool. And Marketo has some special uh, tags. I'll, I'll put a link in the in the comments of the video that will get you uh, started on on CSS with Marketo forms. But uh, you can you can also view some settings. So if you see here, uh, one setting I'm going to talk about is progressive profiling. I generally like to enable this in most scenarios. Um, there's very few where I won't at least try to get one additional field, unless it's just like basic lead gen, um, like first touch. Uh, and then you can have, if you have a social plugin, you can have the uh, Facebook, Twitter um, autofill. And then you can set the follow-up rules to either stay on the same page, go to an external URL, or, or a Marketo landing page. And then when you're done, you would simply click uh, Finish. So uh, you you'd click Approve and Close, and that, that would basically be that. So uh, I wanted to talk through a couple things here with the form, though, and that's uh, progressive profiling and uh, visibility rules. So uh, real quick, one moment while I adjust my settings. Cool. So. You'll notice this box down here where I said uh, back on the form settings and then uh, and then settings, uh, I have this progressive profiling enabled. If I go back here and I click on this box, uh, well, first this box shows up saying progressive profiling, and what that means is these fields that are above outside this box are always going to display uh, every time this form gets viewed, and then the fields that are inside this box are going to be the the additional additional fields of information we're going to ask for every time they come back. So uh, a common use case for this kind of thing is like if you have a content landing page, um, like say in your nurturing strategy, you just you direct people to download content uh, from via your emails. Uh, and that you take them to a Marketo landing page, you use this form. Uh, we might try to get one additional piece of information every time they come back. Whereas, you know, in a, in a simple scenario, you know, we could have all these things back down here. And so at the most basic, we're just asking them for their name and email address. And that, that'll always be asked for. And 
but we want to make sure that this we we for you know Salesforce routing purposes or whatever we capture their postal code or whatever whatever it is that your CRM uses to assign uh, lead ownership. Uh, I've I've been in I've seen some situations where it's postal code. I've seen situations where it's just state region. Um, it depends on your organization, to be honest. But uh, the best best way to use progressive profiling is to prioritize how how you're going to go about getting data and in what order. So when you uh, when you have this box selected, you can you can control the number of blank fields, and this is simply going to be uh, so when they come back, how many of the fields in here do we want to display? Uh, typically, you know, if, if if you're if you're nurturing with content on a regular basis, I'd say one or two is fine. Uh, you can make this as many or as few as you want. And then this ensures that on an ongoing basis, you're going to continue to get uh, high quality, uh, yeah, high, high level of conversions and more form fill outs. And then the, uh, the second thing I want to talk about was visibility rules. So say, for example, uh, I only want, so if someone selects the United States as their country, uh, I want state to be populated or to, to be visible. So there's a box down here that'll save uh, visibility rules. And I have it enabled right now, which is why it appears to be slightly grayed out. But when you when you click on that, you can edit this to where it says, I'm only going to show state if the country is USA. And uh, and then there's the pick list values here as normal. So that that makes it really cool when, when this form goes to get loaded. If, uh, if you ever wanted, and I, it wouldn't work in progressive profiling unless I had uh, two fields visible. And so I wouldn't combine progressive profiling with visibility rules if you can't help, if you can help it. But, uh, but that it just, it's, it's a nice way to clean up your forms and make, make it look like it's not asking for a lot of data, but then hit them with, with more requests as, as you go on. And then you see on a few of these fields that I have asterisks for uh, is required. There's just a simple checkbox here. And you can adjust the label text to be um, you know whatever you want. And see that populated nice and pretty. Um, back and that's that's basically it so if you wanted to uh, actually finish this you could just finish approve and close and this form is ready to go on to any marketo landing page or be embedded on your website so uh, in the in the second case if you wanted to go to form actions and embed it on your site you just go down here to embed code and then uh, you have two options, normal and light box. So normal is just going to make it appear static on your page. It's just going to be visible. Light box is something you can use if you want to get fancy and make sure the form only pops up when like a call to action button is clicked. Um, I've done this in a number of places and uh, I, I find it to be a really good way to clean up the design of a page. Um, and it's just a, a, a another great option if, uh, if you don't want to have your forms be you know front and center. So uh, this has been a very, very quick, kind of, kind of rushed run through of uh, Marketo Forms 2.0. If you have any questions, hit them up in the comments, or uh, or definitely see uh, nation.marketo.com in the community, and uh, we'll look forward to talking to you soon.